Hey there everyone, welcome to my channel and today I can finally say the 4k results are on the table, finally. So yesterday I made a video with the 1080p figures which well, said it was questionable because you know what's the whole point of using upscaling with such a low res, with such a powerful card that's not meant for full HD and we had CPU bottleneck issues, it was holding the card back, we couldn't use like amazing frame rates even with the LSS and FSR. So this time we are going to compare the LSS quality and performance against FSR quality and performance in 4K with the settings that I'm going to show uh, shortly. So I didn't run natively because it doesn't run at 60 FPS, so I assumed, well, what's the point even? If you're not running at 60 FPS, why bother, you know? So I just kept the uh, settings, the dub scalers that actually work uh, more than 60 or close to 60 because, yes, there's one of the four that's not going to be able to use constant 60 FPS. Take a guess which one is actually the the one the demanding one but yeah let's get to the next slide so here's here are the settings 4k uh pretty much the same settings that i was running during the full hd test and obviously with this sole ex exception being the fact that i'm running 4k and not 1080p this time 100 percent res scale everything else pretty much the very same so you know if you want to Take a better look, just pause the video, look at it, because we want to get you the numbers, shall we? Oh, before we get you the numbers, actually, because people gave me very, very constructive feedback during the 4HD video. They said, hey, you should show how it looks, not just the numbers. We want to see how the game looks with the no, uh, with the settings, with the upscale and stuff. How does it look? Does it look great? Does it look bad? Which one looks better? Which one looks worse? So for that, I took screenshots during every run so that we can compare. And then, well, it's very subjective. It, it you know, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. So it all comes down to preference at the end of the day. But here we go. So first one is performance for DLSS 4K. As you can tell, there's a little bit of blur, a little bit of ghosting, but performance is great. So that's a plus. It's not. It's not the most amazing visual, but I guess it works. Uh, then DLSS quality looks much better. There's almost no visible ghosting. Performance is amazing. Visuals are mind-blowing. It's almost like native with a uh, very hefty performance cost, but it is what it is. Then we have FSR on performance. Surprisingly enough, there is less ghosting than DLSS. Performance objectively worse. And uh, it's a great compromise, I guess, with TA V5. It looks quite fine, I gotta say. And the screenshots look very photorealistic with FSR for some reason. I, I don't know why. And then we have FSR on quality, which um, it's a bit of a mixed bag. I would say the cars look nice, but the grass, the terrain doesn't really look that nice at all. Like, look at the grass. It's just horrifying. It's the ugliest thing I've ever seen. And that, that also applies to performance on FSR, but as we are like, as this one kind of blurs out background, you cannot see much, but this one makes it rather evident as you can tell. But yeah, let's jump straight to the numbers because that's what we want to see. We want to look at the figures, shall we? So this time I used Brands Hatch, Clear, 2PM, 27 car grid, almost the same thing. Computer is also the same, obviously. And then we have the numbers. Uh, the results are quite shocking, I gotta say, because FSR won, quote unquote, the 1080p race. In a sense, we had like a whopping 81 frames with uh, FSR on quality. And this time, as you can tell, it didn't win. So the LSS on performance got 71.3 average against 69.5 on FSR, which and not much of a difference, but still like two frames. And then DLSS on quality got 60.9 and FSR on quality got 52.3. Yeah. 
52.3. I was not expecting that. I I assumed it would yield around 60 as well, but it didn't. It, it ran much worse, almost like native. Visuals were great. It was no ghosting, but performance penalty was very high, and it shows. Um, yeah, it's a little bit strange, I gotta tell. I gotta tell you guys, I just find it weird, because like, at 1080p, okay, we were being held back by the CPU, so, but it, it won. The fact is, FSR won. Lower load, it had like a 52% load average, frame rate was okay. But one thing that I find very funny though is that the frame rate is very similar, the 4K frame rate is very similar to what we were getting at Full HD, which is kind of mind blowing, isn't it? Because 4K is like four times higher, four times more pixels. And even so, performance is awfully on pair with 1080p because this time we're not being limited by the processor but by the graphics card itself so it allows the card to draw more frames because the cpu is delivering them frames you know the, the cards the cards like hey throw me more frames and it can actually throw more frames but in 1080p it's like hey throw me more throw me more i'm like not doing anything here come on you know i want to work and the cpu is just like bro i can't I'm doing I'm I'm doing my best here. That's all I can do. And uh in 4K it's actually the opposite. Like the CPU is like, hey, here's the frames. And, and the GPU is like, bro, I cannot take it anymore. Sorry, I'm overloaded. I'm like very busy. I, I cannot do that anymore. I'm sorry. And then we see a very different reality here, frame wise. <laughs> a very close reality to Full HD, which really goes to show how demanding uh, ACC happens to be in Full HD. And overall, I mean, CPU-wise, it's very, very demanding. But that's the case for pretty much every game. I mean, you're going to see that if you're running a Quad HD Plus card, you know, a card that's not meant for Full HD at all, that, that won't really get uh, maxed out, you're going to notice that the CPU is going to be holding you back no matter what. It's not going to, like, reach 99% usage. You can try with most games like Warzone. If you set it to 1080p, the card is not going to max out at any point. It's going to be at 80% max. You're going to be like 120, 125 FPS. And that's about it because the card is going to be, the CPU is actually going to be the factor holding it back. And once you shift the load to the graphics card, then the thing changes. And that's when you know, the graphics card becomes the bottleneck, which is ideally what you want to go for. So generally for 2070, you would be looking at Quad HD minimum to your better performance, you know, get the graphics card to actually do some work. But yeah, the numbers are very, very shocking this time around. With DLSS winning, well, it's a close battle, as you can see, you know, performance wise it's very close not so much once we we got to the quality where it runs very very um how can i even it it's not satisfying enough i would say if you want to really play in 4k you either drop the graphics settings or you run performance instead of quality because quality i mean it's you didn't 60 fps but it's very you know it's just 60 it's just enough so the card is maxing out it's working really hard it's working its guts off and it's using just 60. so you're getting high temperatures you risking your lifespan of rock because temperatures are high usage is high and so on so it, it's better to have a little bit of headroom you know look at a lower uh load if possible i mean if you really want quality you know, a man's got to do what a man's got to do, but generally, I mean, it's 10 more frames. If you look at quality and look at performance on the LSS, it's 10 frames, a whole 10 FPS. And the visual difference isn't that massive. I mean, there's a little bit of ghosting. I mean, if we go back to like compare performance, this is performance, this is quality, this is performance, this is quality. Quality does look better, obviously, hence the name, quality. It's meant to look good. 
And then you compare it with performance. Well, performance meant for performance is going to compromise it a little bit. Visuals are not going to be great, but you're going to get the frames. And you do get the frames. You get 10 more FPS. So if you don't really care about the visuals, go with performance. If you care about visuals, go with quality, I guess. But, you know, I don't know. Perhaps just drop the res altogether. Play Quad HD or, you know, drop a few settings. You don't have to play on Ultra. It's a competitive game, so the more frames you get, the better, I guess. So, yeah, it turns out 4K even with upscaling, even, you know, DLSS and, 4K and uh, FSR, I mean, it's just not enough for a very solid gameplay. It's not going to be very stable, and that's just Brands Hatch. If you go with a more demanding track, like um, Suzuka, you're not gonna get the same performance you're not gonna get the same 60 so it's not 60 all across the board it's not with every track it's not with with every weather condition so if you have rain and stuff it's not gonna perform and you you know you're on the edge already you're running like clear it's clear weather it's perfect it's there's nothing like actually troubling the graphics card once you add rain on top of it and stuff it's not gonna work simple as that Anyway, let's get to temperatures, let's get, let's get to CPU usage, and all the good stuff. And that next slide. Uh, well, so this is getting confusing, because now we have four whole <laughs> bars. Let's check. So temperatures, as you can see, it's pretty much on pair. Uh, all above, or pretty close to 80. 81, 83, 79, 80. I remind that, you know, I ran the test all at once, so there was a little bit of, you know, additional temperature on top of that, because the card kind of, you know, got heated up and stuff, so temperatures got higher eventually. But as you can see, it's pretty even, Steven, generally. Uh, FSR quality seems to be very demanding. It pegs in 98, 99%. All the time, it doesn't drop. The LSS quality does almost uh, suffer from the same issue because the temperature like the top max temperature for the run was like 83 as well but it wasn't consistent 83 and during fsr it was consistent 83 because the load was also very consistent sitting at 98 99 while in, uh, with dlss it would eventually drop to 95 94 percent which eventually uh would drop the temperatures down during parts of the track which were not as demanding or with not many cars on the screen and stuff so that also collaborates to the temperature issue uh as far as gpu usage goes as mentioned before it's free even steven fsr quality being the the top one using 98 percent all across the board and the DLSS 97% average, as you can see, a little bit lower than FSR, but also providing, you know, a very hot gameplay. GPU running hot across the board, even with a performance. Performance at 95%. Uh, a little lower, temperatures lower, as well as a consequence, you see 80, 80 and 79. And uh, DLSS quality and FSR quality being hotter respectively so there is quite a difference there and usage wise there is a surprise look at that so it, it was pretty much on pair with uh with the run that we had in 1080p so 34 but we had FSR on quality using a lot less because it was pushing the card more so the more it pushes the card the load on the CPU gets alleviated so there there's proof that you know the higher you go with the gpu load and stuff the more you force the gpu the more you alleviate the load on the processor so that makes it rather evident the one that used it more to make the temperatures go higher was also the one that had lower cpu usage so there's that and memory wise we had uh fsr on quality using a lot more a uh, memory than anything else with 6.5 and the dlss Close second. Oh, actually, never mind. FSR performance was using 5.91, and then the LSS much lower on memory consumption altogether with 5.57 and 493, respectively. So that's it for the 4K test this time around. Not much to show, not much to talk. I think the results speak for themselves. There's not much to talk here. 
whatsoever. The numbers are there. DLSS is the clear winner for 4K Ultra HD, as you can tell by yourself. It just happens to be the clear winner today. And tomorrow, probably, I'm going to be running the Quad HD benchmark to see whether the same, uh, same thing applies, same reality applies. Maybe we have a twist and DLSS loses next time around. So for 1080p with all the, you know, it's not recommended at all to run ACC in 1080p with a 2070. It's just pointless. It's, I mean, you don't even need upscaling to begin with. The results were there. Like one FPS less than like the best, the second best result. And then obviously FSR was like all the way up there with 81, but even so, like you don't actually have to run upscaling in 1080p and the CPU holds it back. So performance is not as great as it could possibly be if the CPU was not holding it back. If it could actually go at 99%, but you know, the CPU was begging. But the point is, uh, once the, once things get really complicated as far as, uh, demands, hardware demands get more complicated, you can see that the LSS steps up and it's a clear, clear winner this time around with a whopping 11 frames on top of, uh, the LSS, uh, on top of FSR. I mean, look at that. The LSS. I mean, it looks worse, objectively worse on performance. It's very blurry. On quality, it looks better, but, you know, it's a bit of a trade-off. It's all about what you want. If you want visuals, if you want performance, or, I mean, it's, it's kind of pushing the boundary, honestly, with 4K anyway, for the 2070. It's not a 4K card. It's nearly there, but it's not. It's more quad HD-ish. 4K is a little bit of stretch, and it shows, but yeah. That's the 4K video. I hope you guys liked it. I'm really sorry about the 1080p video. It was really dumb. I shouldn't have made it even because it's, uh, it's pointless. There's no point in running upscaling for full HD, but I, I just wanted to do it for science. It's not like I actually plan to use upscaling in 1080p anyway. It was just for the sake of science and comparing look at numbers. But here's the 4K test that you guys wanted. Hope you guys enjoyed it. And, uh, feedback's much appreciated as usual. See you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.